Oh my god, who the hell cares? <laughs> Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Oh, I don't have a Whoa! Well, better hurry up, Mike! Oh my god! Hello and the welcome is to taken. another Woodshop Podcast with Mike Coffey of Coffee Custom Builds, Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, and Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all as well as the podcast on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 107 of Another Woodshop Podcast, where if the laughter lasts longer than four hours, please consult a medical professional. I get it. I get it. Yeah, what's it's, going uh, on, boys? Hey, it's a problem that pops up every now and then. Yeah, it does. And it doesn't... Oh, speaking of over. problems that pop up every now and then, Pete... Let's talk about birthdays. someone very special. <laughs> Tyler Valentine, happy birthday from the AWP boys. Yeah, uh, someone, happy birthday. Yeah, little birdie reached out to us, told us that you, you turned a whole whatever age you are, and we're proud of You've you. You've turned a whole insert age here. <laughs> and look at you. You don't look a day over the age you are. Oh, <laughs> a different happy age birthday. entirely. Uh, so happy birthday. And uh, no, this is not a segment. Don't you go dying on us. On, so don't anyone try to do this to us again. Uh, but speaking of didn't things that are getting this? older, let's talk about our patrons, Mike. Did, well, didn't we do this before? Didn't we do someone else, get, we give someone else a happy birthday on here? So we do someone every week. We, we do someone every I week. I don't. You guys got uh, information? Have you, you seen his beard? <laughs> I'm not doing anyone. Uh, <laughs> was that too, was that too on the nose? <laughs> he that did not. He was pretty on the nose. I've, okay, sorry. Uh, that joke just was leave one me a one five. star review on my Etsy. Yeah, I got, oh. I got you. Uh, anyways, that is not cool. We don't leave Dan one star reviews, people. We leave him five you down. Or sixes at the very least. I think we need to figure out how to get Dan. Yo, if you're gonna leave me a one star review, understand that if you bought something for me, I have your address. Ooh, that's a interesting thing to. That's an interesting threat to levy on the internet. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just, I'm just, just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing random facts out. Just, just throwing out a very, very specific threat to people who buy from me. Please buy. From anyway, me. big thanks to our patrons. <laughs> if you wanted to go check us out on Patreon.com forward slash Another Woodshop Podcast, we'd really appreciate that. That'd be awesome. Uh, we have a bunch of supporters over there. Over a hundred and. 15 or there's like 117 right now so big thanks to all you guys you guys are awesome we really appreciate you so very much listeners They're so awesome Mike, supporters on patreon just in case oh. people don't know what patreon is and what are the some of the benefits you can get can you just rattle off some just because maybe people don't know well, for one if for you one. pay money to patreon and that money gets funneled into another woodshop podcast you get things like early access to the podcast typically three days before all the plebs that's what we call the listeners who don't pay uh it's very diminutive we plebs. really like to establish sex dominance no no us uh, s-e-c-t-s yeah not sex, sex. sex. <laughs> casts casts that's what i was thinking casts not sex it's like like uh head tilt cats. what <laughs> yeah s-e-c-t-s it sounds worse when you don't anyway we like to really you break need up to our enunciate uh, the t mike enunciate Sex. <laughs> enunciate. You need to enunciate when you measure. Uh, so we got you can get early access to the episodes uh three days early. You got the pre-show episode. You got the pre-show. Yep, you get the pre-show. Uh, you get the, the video feed, version of that. And you get yep, the video get version as well. If you're a VIP patron, after two months, you get a free t-shirt. T-shirt. Um, yeah, we got all kinds of benefits over and there. Extra so love from us. We've been known to hug the top tier patrons. You know, we're it's we're actually really we're actually really we, if you have other, if you're a patron and if you have, have ideas for other ways we can give you good content, you know, yes. let us know. Let yeah, us we're open to that. The, yeah, we're open. We really want to know what like be a good thing. Obviously, it's within we reason. Really you can't like drive give... your house and like give your kid a bris or something. But if you want to do anything like that, just let us know. That'd be really cool. Um, <laughs> it's very specific. We can't. We we can't. You know, perform circumcisions in all the lower. Speak for yourself. So. Yeah, right. Dan's totally licensed. <laughs> I'm a licensed uh, circumciser circumcisionist you would know there, that there if we you were a real there. circumcisionist <laughs> yeah circumcisionizer you caught me uh so big thanks for our patrons um you know we've got some really cool segments on this show yeah the best segment of the whole show is this one go black betty and my favorite Ram part Ram. about it is 
is we don't get reviews anymore, so we don't have to do anything else. So we're going to move on to our <laughs> next best segment, and that's the old what's on my bench. And that's, what's on my bench? In case you're new to this nice. show somehow, uh, that is actually Daniel Dunlap of Another Witch Up Podcast singing that. You're probably thinking, no, no, that has to be an angel, but it's not mutually exclusive. Nope. It can both Daniel be an Dunlap. angel and Daniel Dunlap would work. Singing, Featuring so. puberty. Future puberty. <laughs> And you can measure his puberty if you break out a ruler. Uh, anyway, so I don't know what and that means. <laughs> Anunci mayonnaise. No, nuts he ate. Anunci Anunci mayonnaise. mayonnaise. <laughs> I can't think of any. It didn't work out. Very well. uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to go first. Uh, please do. After Dan. Dan, how was your oh, <laughs> no, I don't want to go first. I'll, you have me all excited. I don't want to go I'll go first. I'm going to go quick. Uh, my week's been pretty hectic. I'm wrapping up. I'll rattle off a few things. I'm wrapping up this first ground, uh, this grounding box for my my VIP customer there. Really excited about that. Uh, Got to get that thing shipped out to Chicago this week coming up for a big Chicago. audio Chicago! Chi-Town, the Windy City, Kanye's home, Pachi's. Hey, uh, uh, fun fact. They don't call Chicago the Windy City because it's windy. All right. Because of the farts? Please don't follow up with any more information. Yep, that's because all I got. Because of the farts? Because of the farts. You say, you say the farts? Yeah. Break wind. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, also I'm doing... <laughs> no, no. Also, I've got uh, uh, the table that had the powder post beetle infestation is clear of powder post beetles i've been observing that thing for a week uh we did the, all the finish sanding work on that today tomorrow that thing is getting its uh finish on there it'll be all wrapped up but i gotta coordinate with the customer when you get that delivered really excited about that i wrapped up a big po for uh, a, cus- a new customer they make big tools for uh door companies um I don't know that I should say the name of the company on here, but um, I'm gonna, it's no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's Milgard. No, they, uh, it's, it, it's just some company that I uh, work with uh, locally. We just got the first PO done and things went really well. So I'm really happy uh, with that relationship. Um, and um, let's see. Oh, I made this design for a kid's stool. One of my customers is an event planning company. Um, and they want to know if I can make a stool that's like a knockdown stool, but we're going to, what's up, Dan? When you say stool, are you talking, uh, it's poop. I made uh, children's okay. poop and, uh, <laughs> no, no, it's an actual, uh, like a sitting stool. Like, like a stool a sample. No, it's, a, it's just a tiny little stool, you know, kids just make little stools. It's really weird. I don't know why we keep going into the gutter with this one, but we're gonna AWP on. So yeah, we're going to, um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to. Uh, I came up with this this design. It's simple design. It's just a three part, two legs with a half lap, and then a mortise and tenon that fits into the top. It all locks together real tight. Uh, I made an extra one for my son. His isn't even glued up. He's been beating the crap out of it, and it's still held together just fine. So um, I'm making Random a thought. really yeah. When you say half lap, does anybody else think of a pat, a lap. pat lap that's cut in half, like yes. a like a, a side Only section of a pat half. lap? No, the bottom half only. <laughs> the only part that matters, you know? Yeah. Okay. The French is. Continue. <laughs> Outrageous accent. <laughs> no, it's uh <laughs> no, we um that's some foreshadowing. Good thing he doesn't. No, we've got this. um what else? Uh oh yeah, anyway, that design. I'm gonna get that design up. I'm gonna probably spend some time on Easter Sunday just chilling out, catching up on some digital design files that I'm needing to list. So I'll get those up on my website. And I'll put them up on Etsy for a slightly more exorbitant price. Uh, but yeah, those will go up at least soon. six and a half percent more. Thirty uh, percent uh, more. Thirty <laughs> percent. Yeah, thirty percent plus eight percent, eight point nine or whatever the consumer pricing index raising was. So um, anyway, that's kind of my week. I'm just real busy in the shop. Sean's been gone this week. We've got. Uh, oh, I didn't tell you guys. Uh, I've got those that door job. I've got all the material here for that, those doors, those big carriage doors. Really excited about those. But it looks like, did I tell you guys about that L-shaped desk with the dual watered miter fall, yeah, yeah. mitered waterfalls? Looks like that's a lock. I'm super excited awesome. about that. It's uh, the mitered waterfalls. And then there's a live edge middle thing holding up the middle. It's going to be sick. I'm super excited about You told us about, about that? It. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Congratulations. Uh, I remember it looks like it's a lot. It. So yeah, yeah, I thought I talked about it like last the week. rendering and stuff too. Yeah, I showed you the rendering. Yeah. Yep, I sent it in. Dan, and he's like, yeah, "Oh, it's I a lot. It's this much." And then he said one of those numbers that makes us black out. And then yeah, it was. Yeah. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Uh, but it's a cool job, and it's with a customer that. Well, my customer is an interior designer who I've been trying to work with for a while. She's super great. Um, 
And her customer is a very big company in the area that's going to be remodeling all their offices, which means a lot of new office furniture, which I'm very excited about. So hopefully there's a lot more opportunity here. Um, yeah, that's kind of my week. Uh, I just want to get into these questions real quick. So Dan, go. I've had a pretty, pretty uh, schedule baller? filled. <laughs> pretty well, I wouldn't say baller. It's just been a schedule filled week. I, I feel like I've been super busy. Uh, you know, you know, as always, bow ties are keeping me busy and inserts are keeping me actually pretty busy as well. What's, what's been really cool is I put a call out on Instagram for if anybody has a table saw or a miter saw that they want an insert for, if they could send me some sort of like tracing or the actual insert that itself through the mail and I would you know, work with them and I'd, I'd make a, a, a file and I'd cut the piece and I'd send it back to them. I've had a lot of people like respond to that. And I, I, I'm drowning, <clears throat> I'm drowning in inserts over here. I've, I've got at least a dozen that I need to work on, which is, no one does an insert like Daniel Dunlap. Insert joke here. Oh my <laughs> God. Why do I do a podcast with you guys? Um, Mm. you get paid by I don't the word know. i don't know do i get paid by the word i feel yeah. like i'm underpaid um <laughs> pay more <laughs> so i have been doing that and uh i've gotten a few new projects on the books uh i i don't remember if i brought this up last week but i took a new new job for some faux beams that i'm going to put up in somebody's living room that's going to be super fun um uh, they want them to look reclaimed so I have a reclaimed contact. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to, I'm going to like do, do like a resaw and just use the faces and I'll, I'll laminate it to like veneer some, right? Almost <clears throat> some what now you're going to like veneer it. Yeah. I'm going to veneer it onto like mm -hmm. some, uh, ultralight MDF or something, something that's light and it's not going to kill anybody when it falls down and hopefully it won't fall down. You Sorry, know, Dan, I missed, I, it broke up for me. What are you making? What is the item? Some faux beams, faux beams in a in a living room. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. Nice. That's gonna look slick. Yeah, it should look really, really cool. I'm really excited about that one. That's definitely the way um, to do that. Also, wow, did you hear that throat? That was yeah, such so. a loud throat burp. <laughs> wow. That was weird. Why I'm gonna have to see if next time. Jackman will let me use the redacted sound clip for that. Redact. <laughs> <laughs> that was super weird. Uh, um the uh the oak door client they asked me if i could make some pocket doors for them and they're going to be super custom these pocket doors are six foot by ten foot and wow. i need to make four of them so really that's going to be an door. interesting challenge good thing you have such a big shop yeah perfect <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, tell yeah. me about it uh the speaking of Get the up. shop speaking <laughs> of the shop the uh the search <laughs> continues uh i'm not i feel like i'm not having a whole lot of luck it's it's been quite a struggle i know everybody thinks that you know i live in nebraska it's in the middle of nowhere but that's not the case unfortunately i do live in suburbia hell uh so it's it's kind of tough finding a shop or a space or a property that hits all the check marks that i have for things that i need so Tried looking outside of sarpy county <clears throat> uh i would i would happily look outside of sarpy county but uh that's something you gotta you're take right, then up you wouldn't be king anymore i get it you gotta you gotta take that up with mrs dunlap actually she doesn't want to stop being queen i get it she doesn't want to stop being queen she's you know she wears the throne oh she wears the throne no she wears the crown she wears the crown happily um <laughs> uh let's see i think i think that's pretty much it my my week has just been uh oh no just kidding. I got a pretty forceful text from my client that has the Hackberry slab table, the live edge slab, and they want it, which is understandable. You know, I've kind of dropped the ball on that. So that needs to get done this week. So I'm spending a lot of time over at Nick Brim shop trying to get that done because I don't have any shop space to accommodate that table. So Nick has been kind enough to let me work on that in his shop. So I'm kind of bouncing between my shop and Nick's shop, trying to get that table done. 
What else has to for, get done for that client? What's that? What else has to get done on it? Uh, right now, just the finishing and installing the legs. I've, I've got everything mm -hmm. uh, kind of wrapped up. Uh, I, I think I sanded it to 320 the other night, so what it's, it's it ready to go. Lacquer? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a wipe on poly. I'm not gonna spray it with lacquer. It's gonna be a bar like a bar <laughs> table. I don't think lacquer would hold up well enough, unfortunately. No. I would love to use lacquer just because of the fact that it it cures and dries so fast. But yeah, I'm gonna go with a wipe on poly. I, I was thinking about doing a bar top epoxy, but to be perfectly honest, I haven't used bar top epoxy enough well, to know all the, the variables. Man. Dude, and... you have to have no dust in that space. For yeah, like 24 I mean, it's... hours. Otherwise, it looks like trash. Nick. Yes, he's very dusty. I was watching a video dusty by. Nick. Uh, Blacktail Studios on YouTube, and he was doing some bar top epoxy stuff, and he was giving a lot of tips and tricks. And man, he he did a great job of talking me out of doing it. So I'm gonna go with a wipe on poly, uh, just for durability. Uh, real quick, our quality. lights just flickered, so just <laughs> give you a heads up. Uh, anyway, cool, sorry. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty much done. Uh, Pete, uh, real quick. Can I, I forgot a couple of things because we, we did the show last Tuesday, right? It's been a while. It feels like it's been a while. Yeah. Um, I did a headboard last week as well. Um, I, I knocked yeah, out I this head, this slab edge headboard. Oh, I thought it was going to be yes. way small looking. <laughs> that reminds me too. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I thought it was going to be really small, but it actually fit the space so nice. Like they picked out such a perfect slab for this area. And uh, the, I thought I was, we were making the, the uprights for this headboard. And I was like, man, this feels really, um, just like not like not enough, you know. It felt like it wasn't going to be substantial enough the the uprights. But no, man, we got on there and it was just it was perfect. Like the thing wasn't moving at all. Once we put the bed up against it, I mean the thing just doesn't move. I mean it was just it was like perfect. Like it makes me want to do more headboards really bad. I designed a shaker headboard for our bed um, like two three months ago, and I think I'm just gonna knock it out in a day here pretty soon. Like it just looks like a fun project, so I can just knock. I can probably knock out the headboard in no time. Make some panels for it and. Um, I really want to get it for a bed, but yeah, you know, it was like a ton of fun. I hope I get more of those live edge headboards or any headboards, really. I'm going to try to push those. Uh, they're just, you know, it's like tables, doors are all kind of the same. Um, and that was kind of it. Sorry, Pete. What's up? Oh, Dan had something else. Yeah, and you, you yeah you reminded me. I actually delivered the monkey pod live edge uh, behind the couch table for my client. Sofa and table. That came, out, that came out like super gorgeous. Monkey pod really is good. so beautiful when it's finished that's yeah, pretty it's stuff unbelievable I, I finished it with a uh, rubio monocoat pure just just absolutely beautiful the the clients were blown away and i'm gonna be making three side tables and a coffee table to match that so and i have to have that done by memorial day <laughs> oh my god please send help meet that schedule. Yeah, you, thank you thank you for the like comments you need Mike. actual help <laughs> <laughs> You might need someone else in a shop to help you. With I really do. I really do. I need a bigger shop and I need an employee so bad. Anyway, Pete, I want to hear do about you. Train you train someone to yeah. run your CNC? It's a little summer vacation, like John's locally? probably going to be free. I, I'm i actually thinking about Dan, training about my John? daughter. I'm, no, my, my daughter who's 13. Yeah, Lena. I, I mean. I, I think I could train her. Do you think her she could do it? I'd, I'd pay her. Absolutely. Absolutely, she I mean, could. not not like a legal amount you wouldn't pay. Her. That's no. you put money on the table. <laughs> We're like, talking like four dollars an hour, Come on. right? Well, that seems high. Whoa. She's never operated that before. <laughs> yeah, it's actually something I've been tossing around in my head. I give them a sander; they'll be fine. Is she 13? 14? thirteen? How old is Elena? Thirteen? She'll be she'll be fourteen. Oh, you just in said November. that. Man, she uh, Elena's super smart. She could totally do that. She's way smarter than you. She could one. She is that. actually. Let me let me brag about my daughter real fast. She's she is crazy super smart. smart. You just talk to her. She's super smart. You could tell. Uh, in Nebraska here, we do the we do a test called the NSCATS, which is the ne Nebraska yeah, it's State. It. It's NSCAT. Cool <laughs> sample. NSCAS. I don't I don't know what the letters means, but it's like the state testing in schools. Out of two hundred and twenty five kids in her seventh grade class. She had the top score. Whoa. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Really great. She could absolutely run a one finity. <laughs> we learned that. Uh, we learned that like three or four days ago. I was like blown away. That kid that's is amazing. So Good smart. job, Elena. 
Yeah. Can you anyway. actually tell her I said very good job? I mean, really, I, I, like I will. I think that will mean nothing to her. Very good job. Yeah, that's going to really mean nothing to her. But if you could tell her that, I really would have. I'm going to. I'm going to put really it. Great. I'm going to put it on a plaque, Mike. You're going to put it on. Son. You're going to put it on the whiteboard. Just tell her <laughs> like never hear about this file. Don't worry about it. Just go run this file on a CNC, and she's going to take yeah. it off. Like <laughs> Uncle Mike's real proud of you. <laughs> All right, Pete, it's your turn. We hey, I've talked turn. enough. All right, so it is uh, way too much, frankly. We got a lot of questions, Dan and Mike. I'm going to. Should just open with the Elena sorry. thing, and then we could have just. <laughs> just <got all> the <laughs> this week's topic is Elena's brains. So I'm working on those stupid ice climbing tools. They're almost done. I just want to get them wrapped up. Uh, there's a very good chance I may turn the job down. Or basically, I'm going to requote them with what I really should be charging for this. And then I will not be taking that job on in the future. Basically, that's what's going to happen. Or I just sent out a scary You're going to you're give them the old, the old F you? The old price? F you, but it's in reality, it's like what these are time-wise taking me per hour. I'm going to be charging my hourly shop rate and uh, they're not going to be happy about it because it's more than double the cost they're currently paying. And uh, if they don't walk away, I'm going to just hire people to come in and help me with it. Because for me to do it over weeks, it's just it's in the numbers that they want potentially in a future. I don't know about you, Pete, but I'm actually, I'm actually at the point where I feel like I need to buy a second one Finity to keep up. Damn. Really? Yeah. But the problem is like, I don't have the space. I don't have I the space for it, you but need I need something to be running it while you're doing other stuff. Yeah, I need something. Something needs to something needs to change. That's why sure. you need to get some other people involved. But yeah, so um, yeah, these ice climbing tools getting wrapped up. I uh, what is this? Oh, I got the dust collector last week. The Laguna P Flux, the new 2020 models. Apparently, the instructions changed a little bit, and some other uh, components on it have changed because it's got the auto HEPA cleaner on it now too. So after I want to run I it on two twenty. And it comes stock with 110. And, and I hate Laguna, cleaning my HEPAs. Yeah, it's Laguna worse. does not it's, it, have the 220 terrible. conversion kit yet. So basically, I'm waiting on that. For now, I'm going to be wiring up the 110. It's a different Wait, kit. It, they don't have it yet? They don't have it in all? stock yet. They don't have it as a part yet. Mm. These things yeah, literally just dropped for now. in yeah, March yeah, and immediately for sold now. out. Yeah, for now. yeah, it's whatever. But what's annoying is when you swap it out, the big motor, the main one, you can just rewire for 220. The small motor that runs the, the HEPA cleaner, that whole motor gets swapped. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, so it's that, that whole, that's a little yeah. pain in the butt. But those little tiny done. motors, yeah. I, I literally just need to wire up the uh, the outlet and just shoot that part of it or the, the, the plug, whatever, and plug it in and hopefully it won't trip a breaker. So I don't know. It, it says to run, a, run on a 30 amp breaker for 110. Yeah, even though it runs on an 18 amp, there's sustain. I'm assuming they're talking about spin up. It'll peak, but it should be fine. It shouldn't trip a breaker. There's nothing else on the um, plug that I'm going to be putting it on. 30 amp 110. Is that That's what I was confused about too. It literally says that in a thing. And then it says 15 amp for the 220 because it's just- Run it on down. a 20 amp Look, and you'll be fine. It'll be I, don't know much, amp. I don't know much about electrical stuff, yeah. but I will tell you this. When I when I ran my uh, P-Flux 1 on 110, I was tripping breakers here and there. I mean, you were pretty regularly. Yeah. You were. Now, here's the thing, though. This plug that I'm, I'll be plugging it into, nothing else is on it. Except well, that should be helpful. Be yeah. So, like, nothing else will be power, like, going to that. It should be fine with 110. Dedicated is, circuit will be fine. Yeah. I'm not. Also, I'm the new circuit, if you put like I've never a new... heard of a 30 amp 110. <laughs> I, that doesn't exist. So, the, uh, the, <laughs> um, if you put like a newer, uh, well, that's a brand hmm. new panel. We just put it in this year. We'll be fine. It, you know what? We'll figure it out in uh, the next day or so. That's it'll what I'm gonna do. Right. Hey, put a twenty amp. Put it on a twenty amp. It's fine. It's on a twenty amp. Yeah, so it'll be fine. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so that that came out. I'm finishing it up. Uh, what's stupid is the 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 new assembly is you have to keep the foam that it comes with because you're supposed to flip it upside down and mount the like the legs to it. I immediately I threw out too. the foam. Yeah. That day was garbage day, and then a buddy of mine, Carmine, came <laughs> over and we ended up lifting it onto the base while Emma was screwing it on uh to the to the legs. So mm, talk we didn't kill ourselves. Me. Yes, I will. Anyways, that's all assembled. I only have three extra parts that will get installed tomorrow. Literally the parts that are supposed to connect over the where the legs are screwed to the, the main part. I forgot to install those covers. So just got to put that on there. It's just extra rigidity or whatever. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so yeah, you need to rewire it. It's gardening season. It's getting really warm. It was freezing last week. We actually had some hail one day. 
today was 89 degrees outside. So we were sweating. I went and picked up some, uh, some mulch yesterday. And some of you know, I have that little green trailer. I love that thing. I haul it behind my Subaru. Well, I took it to Lowe's. I loaded up on mulch and I calculated, I'm like, okay, Low this much, this many up. bags. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Like the guy was just like loading it on the forklift. In, I got 25 bags and he's loading it into my trailer. He puts them down and I have never seen that thing sit so low. And I was like, oh damn, the bags are wet. They're almost double the weight. So I was basically Multi. like way over capacity on, uh, on, on hauling it. Uh, so we offloaded it. And Subaru we couldn't handle that? Man, no, the that's trailer. Shocking. The trailer could have, the trailer sat real low. And um, basically, the reason I'm telling this story, I found something out. Did you know that Lowe's, right next to the uh, pro area where they have the awning with the lumber pickup, there's a free air fill up at that spot. And I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering if there's one at Home Depot now, but apparently Lowe's has them there for pros when they load up heavy stuff. A lot of times they find out that they don't have enough air in their tires, like I did, because one of my tires was hella flat. And uh, filled up for free. So just, you know, if you're ever in an area where there's a Lowe's and you need some air in your tires. Pro tip. Pro tip. Boom. <laughs> pro tip. Uh, but yeah, it's just gardening season. So we're going to be doing a lot of landscaping and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, that's all boring. Then uh, what else? Oh, I taught uh, a how-to Etsy class on Saturday. Ooh, it was that was a, fantastic. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I was in attendance. Lying. And that was like, I didn't expect much from you, Pete, because I know you. But I don't. That either. was really good. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I got some really good feedback <laughs> on it. The class. Was no, actually, honestly, sorry. All jokes aside, it was really good. I appreciate that. Um, we had about thirty people in it. It was. It's really hard to present a class when everyone is muted and you see nothing but just yourself in a little window and whatever you're showing. There's no audience feedback. So whatever. It's like an hour long me, story. Basically, dude, I was getting. Because uh, it's hard to gauge if i'm making my point or not whatever but uh, emma was helping me out she was so helpful she was basically grabbing all the questions as they were coming in and she was and moderating. moderating jokes and stuff yeah, yeah exactly she was making sure that everyone was in line dan was a little rowdy in the chat i saw the chat dan that's fine kidding. no he behaved so Ish. we wrapped up it was literally an hour on a dot for the initial class i talked about everything from opening up a shop to you know pushing your shop to the next level and stuff that I'm working on and they should work on. I showed my numbers openly. Uh, and then I recorded the whole thing. So that is going to be dropping on my YouTube channel tomorrow, Friday. So if you're listening to this as a patron today, it's available. Everyone else still listening to it on Monday. It's already live. So you can watch this video. It's about an hour and 40 minutes because it's an hour of the class and about 40 minutes of Q and a some really good questions that people ask. Dan, I've actually been some putting answers. some of your techniques to use this past week. I, I'm glad it's helping. You're already killing it. You're, I, I didn't say it was helping, you, but I. But the last I mean, couple of weeks you've been doing. So I, get ahead of of use, I got two one star reviews today. So <laughs> screw you, yeah. Petri. Dang it. <laughs> screw them over. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, a little stressful, but I, uh, I got it it's done. Funny, but I'm gonna now because jump off I'm, a bridge. Suddenly, Mr. Etsy with the teaching a class, everyone reached out to me about this whole Etsy raising their fees from 5% to 5 Oh, oh the, sorry, the timing on that was terrible. Great. Yeah, I was teaching a class <laughs> and I literally was like, yeah, Monday, they're going up, by the way. But here's my take for everyone that uh, is upset about the Etsy fees. Everyone's like, fees are going up 30%. No, it, they're going up 1.5%. 30%. Uh, sorry, 1.5 is technically 30% of the number five, but that doesn't mean they're going up 30%. They're going up 1.5%. On a $100 order, you're losing another $1.50. If you can't absorb that into your, yeah, an extra 1.5%. They only right? take, I, oh, they, they don't take 30% of your order? No. No, everybody gets that wrong. That's crap. Like, but like that they went up 30, there's basically a lot of people are no, getting no, no. mad. They, when they, when you, no. when you spend, sell a hundred dollar item, they don't take $30 of that. No, they take roughly 10%. Sure they do. Of, no, nope. they take 10%. 10%? Mm -hmm. You get charged 6.5%. You're, you're looking at the shipping yeah. costs, Mike. So let me go through it. You're you going to pay, pay that cents, no matter where you, you go. You pay 20 cents to list an item. Then you're going to be paying 6.5%. So let's say you're setting, selling a hundred dollar item. You're going to pay 6.5% in fees. That's $6.50. And then when someone buys an item from you, you have to cover the transaction fee of $3.
or, or three percent. So 3%. it's gonna be three dollars. Which so is now normal you're looking anyway. at you know uh, about nine dollars at plus twenty five cents because that C just tags on that little extra bit on there. So basically twenty cents. Ten percent. Uh, no, twenty twenty cents, 20 cents is a fee. listing. It's it's three percent plus twenty five cents for a transaction fee for the transaction fee. Yeah, that's so standard. Oh, okay. Well, you lose it's a little high right but that now. Is standard. Ballpark. Let's just round it up. Ten percent of your sale is fees. That's what you you're paying. So when people are blowing this up like it's this crazy thing, and like I get that doesn't it. seem like much of a change at all. I don't want to pay these fees either. I don't want to be paying five percent. I wish it was free, but you do get a lot with it. Yeah, no one you wants get, to. You know, you get a yeah. lot of SEO. You get a lot of, you know, a lot for it. And if you can't absorb that small of an increase, you're pricing incorrectly. That's the number one thing you should take away. Absolutely. From and I'm not saying that, you know, you're <clears throat> wrong for not liking it. You shouldn't like it, but it's just part of doing business. All Everything's going up, you know, all the prices. I mean, it's a very guys. small picture outlook on business. Yes. You gotta I've, be I've gotten comments. I've gotten it. comments like that as well, uh, especially in person where people will be like, but they take so much money, but you, you don't understand that one of the you things never that Etsy sales. takes, yeah. <laughs> well, there's that, but one of the things that Etsy takes is the shipping costs. You can, you can ship right That's through one Etsy, of the, yeah, one but of the you're going to you pay go shipping yeah. no matter where you go through. And think of it. So this yeah, way. that's, We've that's a big this. chunk. If, if you look at, if you look at my sales through oh, Etsy last Etsy year, no. uh, I think shipping was my biggest, uh, fee yep that's for the not whole one of the year. things i look at i don't even pay for through shipping from them oh well, yeah that's it's not a, even they're, the they're way that... more expensive than ship nerd or well, pirate depends ship. on what you're shipping the lighter items they actually they come out to be the same as uh pirate ship same like the super light know. items yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty rare for me is, like the, the thing yeah the bow ties and the stuff may not be yeah, worth yeah, it. For the stuff the bow ties and the terrible packaging yeah but you know think of it even this way we were talking about this in the pre-show about uh job management or project management software and Mike uses Jobber and Dan probably should start looking at Jobber, but like Etsy in its <laughs> own sense is a project managing management software. It tells you what yeah, orders super are outstanding. Nice. Looking at dashboard. You, but like you have everything, it's whatever is just through Etsy. That's the only place you can look at it, but you do get some project management there too. Anyways, long story short, I have, I have something to, uh, to try, which I found out about on um, Tuesday of this week there. I'm going to throw a link in here. If you're brand new to Etsy and you want to start an <laughs> Etsy shop, you can click on the link and you will get 40 free listings. Your first list, 40 listings are going to be free. The year don't pay the 20 cents. You basically save $8. That's what it is. Whoa. Yeah, it's huge. Hey, that's um, eight bucks. Take it. That's eight bucks. And the way it works is this is actually something that's open to everyone that has an Etsy shop where if someone uses your link, that person gets 40 free listings and the person whose link you use also gets 40 free listings. So, oh, it's self-serving. It is, but it's you're also helping a All person right. that's starting up. A new I'd shop. love to help myself, but you're going to help yourself. <laughs> How dare so, you? That's something you can check out. I'll throw the link in there. If you go to the site, you, charge uh, your you LLC can rent. set up your own as well. If you are already, <laughs> so if you already have an Etsy shop, it'll automatically just generate the code for you, so you can send it to someone else. Nice. So, there you go. You can. It's like a referral you know, code, but basically, but for eight bucks. Yeah, basically. <laughs> No, Siri. No, yeah, no, no, no. It's helpful for friends. sure. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, what else? Uh, send and me yours, Pete. I'll use it. Oh, you already and have I'll a shop. Send... Oh, I thought you said for anyone who already has one too. No, if you have an Etsy shop set up, it'll just you take have to be you a to new the shop. site. Yeah, brand new shops. That's basically what it is. So if you're one, if you've been thinking about well, starting Well, I feel it, cheated. Perfect time to do it. Well, I feel cheated too. We just started an Etsy shop for Emma. And Can you I just... Out about it. Venmo me eight bucks and make me feel it. better. I'll do it. Yeah. 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 You'll never recover from that financial financially. Fee, no. that <laughs> I can't absorb eight dollars from my fees. Yeah. Are you How can you do this? I'm going out of business. <laughs> eight bucks. This is it. We're closing up shop. Dropping a video tomorrow. I'll put the link in the uh in the show notes. Go check it out. Uh that's it. It's that's definitely a good video to watch. He Pete did a great job. He really did. I appreciate you. Thank you. I don't say nice things about these two very often and so. stay tuned there for some go. other That's classes maybe coming from some other people but we'll just i'll talk, talk about, about it another eventually. week because yeah. we'll talk about it later because i don't want to like steal your thing i hear you did a really good job and well i'll talk about my Appreciate thing i'm going to be doing a class but i'll talk more about it uh next week i have a cur curriculum i'm putting together Two. mine won't be as uh uh, mine won't be free pete no, no mine will be very robust and i'm going to be sharing very real very... raw numbers with the people in the class like very targeted pinpoint what kind of class stuff. are you doing pricing class oh, cool. uh, i've got 50 people signed up right now 
uh, for the pricing class, and uh, it won't be free. Uh, is it, it going to be... be like eight bucks? Because Pete owes me eight bucks. No, actually, you guys are getting a free, free, uh, Ooh. getting in for free if you want to go in. Ask, so, but I was assuming. yes. Please. So you guys are getting in for free, but it's not going to be free, and it's not going to be particularly cheap either. It's going to be. I'm going to be putting a lot of very specifics <clears> in this. A lot of very specific details. If you want pricing. a discounted price, reach out to Daniel Dunlap and I will share my link with you. <laughs> Everyone gets a very <laughs> special private password. So there's Son no of a way beat. to share. Uh, I'm getting that all set up right now. But anyway, it's going to be uh, business. Actually, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to put a link in the show notes for uh, it's a Google Doc to no, sign up go if you're interested it. in the yeah. class. Yeah, shoot I'll that over to Share me. that with Pete. So far, I got 41 people interested. I'm assuming that when I announce the price, it's going to be a quarter of that. Uh, but I've talked to a bunch of people already, and it sounds like they're more than happy to pay. It's honestly a drop in the hat to understand this stuff. This is stuff that would take you a long time to learn on your own. It took me a long time to learn on my own. So if you're wanting a jump start on pricing, specifically what we're doing here with woodworking, furniture, custom woodwork, stuff like that, CNC work, I'm going to go over all of that. I'm going to go over custom furniture, CNC work, laser work. Uh, dealing with big business customers and uh, all down to the residential family customer. So uh, anyway, I'm excited for Pete's video to come out. I'm going to share that. So I've, I'm actually going to watch that probably as soon as it's live. I guess tomorrow yeah, it's going to be, be live, Pete? Yeah, tomorrow morning I'm going to drop it. Yeah, so I'm going to watch that while I'm, the, while I'm in the shop and stuff. So notes. yeah, description stuff. Yeah, all right, yeah. well, um, let's let's jump into questions here real quick. Uh, I'm going to play this first one from Mr. Adam Barnett. Hey guys, Adam here from Barnett Custom Woodworks. Uh, first time caller. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a while actually, but I have two questions, both pertaining to Etsy. So the first one is uh, about taxes. I had a difficult time trying to find all the info on Etsy. And I was wondering if there's like a simple form you could print and just give to your tax person or a way to upload it directly to whatever tax software you might be using. I don't know, maybe I missed something, but it seemed kind of uh, non-intuitive. So what's your best recommended process for taxes through Etsy? And then the second question is about digital files. What's the best way to sell them uh, as far as file types? Do they need to be compressed, best types of pictures and tags and title for the listing? Should it be separate listings for each file or should it be a drop down list for, say, cutting boards and wine caddy templates? So, yeah, I'm not sure what the best thing is there. What do you guys recommend? All right. Put that AWP on us. Pete, you go. Uh, you go. Yeah. So, go. Uh, Adam, we actually answered some of his questions in the class as well because you asked them. But, uh, best place to find like all the tax stuff for Etsy. You don't need to worry about the month to month or each individual thing. A lot of people are so concerned with their individual sales in there and all every fee and it's syncing properly to a tax, turbo tax or whatever. You don't need that. At the end of the, the year, you get a form from Etsy. It tells you how much you've collected, how much income you've, uh, you've gotten. And then you just print out the list of your fees for the year. You can just go to your stats, look at the year, look at all your fees that you paid and just hand out to your accountant. Just give them those numbers. Because they're all on Etsy there. That's that's your fees. That's all you need to provide to your tax uh, tax person. If they're asked for any other info, that's when you you can dig in there too. But I gave five numbers to my tax guy. It was the income and then the four fees. Mike? Uh, also, for your income, I mean, that should just be showing up in your bank account. And that's that should be yeah. tied into your books anyway. So, I mean, that should just be there. Like, you don't need your, your account. Your CPA should be seeing your income for sure. To get your write-offs for your fees for sure that's a separate thing but to see your income that's just in your bank in theory i mean if you have a business or a true well, you will get etsy, a you have a form a separate, etsy but etsy well. does a good job of breaking all that down though so right it should be very seamless is what it, what the answer to that and and then uh i'll jump i'm gonna kind of jump in on the files type thing yeah go for it uh, we're gonna have the same the answer so go for it yeah we're all gonna have, so i like to put in svgs dxfs adobe illustrator and pdfs in the file Sometimes I will also throw in um, the VCarve file, the VCarve 2D and the VCarve 3D. I don't really find that to be super necessary. I mean, I like DXF files the most. I've never had really any issues with the DXF files. SVGs sometimes scale weird when I import them. They're the one I have the most problem with, but I always include them in my file. SVG, DXF, 
Adobe PXF retain PDF. the sizing. Yeah, they retain the sizing and it's 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 what the what you make and export will not change or scale differently. The SVG say that again, can, say that again, Pete. DS, DXFs retain their scaling and measurements. Okay. Whereas yeah, SVGs they, can be resized. They can be all over the, the place. Yeah, like oh. if like I send it out of a program, if I send an SVG out of a program. Uh, I could send it to someone else and they could get something that's like, instead of it being 12 by 20, it's now 24 by 40 for whatever reason. Now you can rescale it back in the software and it's going to be accurate. But if you're doing an say an insert that has to be a very specific measurement. It has to be a very specific size. You want it to be a DXF. Which so you wow. can actually help throw that SVG like in, in there. You could do like 12 inches or eight inches or whatever. Someone could resize it to that and know that it's the exact amount that it's supposed to be too. If it's done, if it doesn't yeah. size correctly, like yeah, a legend. So, um, yeah, you could do so anyway, but you want to include those in there. When I, when I do that, I like to zip them and throw all those things into one fold, uh, one folder. And then I zip that folder and I upload that. I think we all have the same answer for that, right? Yes. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, and then for, <clears throat> well, that's actually it for Adam's question. So the next question is from Adrian. Adrian has this to say. Hey boys, it's Adrian here from Hickory Homestead Creations. And I had a question for you as I'm out here working in my barn. So I have a hundred year old barn um, that was made, built from American chestnut. And I actually have some indications of some bug uh, intrusions. So I was wondering what do you guys suggest for treating the barn to ensure that it no longer continues getting bugs. Second question is, it is a very large barn and I plan on repainting it. What method do you think would be more efficient? Rolling it with hand rollers straight up and down or spraying it with sprayers? Um, and then if you had any paint suggestions, go ahead and throw them out. Um, it's not necessary, but you know, I'm always open for opinions. So thank you guys so much. I know it's been a while, but I definitely still enjoy listening to you guys and keep up the great work. I would say, cause it's a barn, I would fumigate it. <clears throat> I would have like Good idea. a company just come in and fumigate it and drop a bomb in there and kill everything. Cause I just, you drop can the bomb do top. On. Yeah. You could do topical treatments and stuff. Like I just had to do with this slab. But that just doesn't seem like it's going to be nearly as effective as just having no, someone come in there and drop a bomb. Not nearly as effective or efficient, to be honest. Yeah, I just, mean, just, yeah, it's way more efficient to have someone like throw. You could even go buy, down to the store. I think you can buy those and throw them in there and take off, right? Those, but those smoke bombs. Yeah, don't work in the shop after that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, Give you'll get real days. sleepy and then never wake up. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but the, the, I'm pretty sure you can get. Anyway, I definitely have it fumigated. Uh, and then, in my opinion, for the paint work. I would get an airless, like a big airless machine and just make the investment because the amount of time it's going to take you to roll that paint out, it's probably like a G or something for like a, an airless, like a good airless, like a big one. Mm -hmm. um, but you could do the everything. If you have this big barn made of, first of all, I'm pretty sure chestnut is like, has no bug resistance. I'm pretty sure that's why it's in an almost extinct tree species. It has like, very, it's like, yes. it really has a hard time with a lot of stuff. I could be mistaken. It's very susceptible to, uh, to, to insects rot. and rot. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so you're going to want to paint, paint that thing regularly. Plus, if you have an airless, you can paint your outside of your house and stuff. That's my opinion. Dan. Uh, yes, 100%. Uh, get it fumigated. I don't know of any other products that can handle that much, you know, space all at once. I mean, that would just be a nightmare. Um, as far as painting goes, yes, I agree with buying an airless sprayer. As a matter of fact, I sold a I sold my first house that I ever bought in when I was uh, 21. I sold that in 2017 and I had to make some improvements on the house. And what what I did was I bought a very nice Graco sprayer and we sprayed the entire outside of the house. And then when I was done with it, I just listed it for sale and I made about 90 to 95 percent of my money back on the purchase. I mean. I think I bought a Graco sprayer. It was like probably 550 bucks and I made $525 back when I, when I bought it or when I sold it. Awesome. So yeah, that's an option or you could keep it. You basically I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to do, if you're going to do large products with it, it was a great sprayer. It was fantastic. 
but I, I didn't have a need for it. So I sold it. So, right. um, it's not something you need all the time. And yeah, with that being chestnut, oh my gosh. Uh, have you thought about tearing it down and selling off the, the wood? Roasting it on an open fire? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could almost like make nice. a ton of money on all of that, uh, wood. I mean, that, that wood is pretty, uh, sought after. Just thought. I know that feeling. Do you though? <clears throat> no. Pete? <laughs> So yes, uh, get what say you, Peter? Fumigate it, absolutely. There's, I mean, there's, you can't do topical and something that big. Mm -mm. Now, I totally agree with the get a sprayer or honestly, even like get some get quotes on getting it done. That Ooh, might be worth it. Just get so some, much money to have a house painted. I, just get some quotes. You never know. She's, uh, to my knowledge, she's kind of out remotely a little bit. She, there might be some people that paint barns for a certain amount, whatever. Craigslist barn painter. What? If for some reason Showtime. you wanted to have a painting Writing party and just get a bunch of friends to like roll it out or whatever, roll out 18 inch rollers with a three quarter inch nap. The nap is how, how long the, uh, the hairs are. My you naps want, are way longer. I than know that. they are Dan, <laughs> but you want a three quarter inch nap. And the reason is you want to soak up as much paint as you can into that. So you're not constantly, you know, you do two passes and then you have to re, uh, reapply paint the one company that i use that does 18 inch rollers is purdy p-u-r-d-y uh and they're they're sold at sherwin williams fantastic i painted and my whole art. house with it it saved me like hours of work using an 18 inch roller. purdy is owned by sherwin williams i learned uh, yeah, that recently they, oh yeah okay yeah so they're oh yeah um, she did ask for paint recommendations yeah sherwin so williams for paint any really exterior paint but there's like uh you can get like fencing paint like it's made for painting wood fences or whatever fences that's meant to be in the sun meant to get beat up uh you know it's usually a little thicker because it needs to go on a little thicker because you do not want to be doing two coats so that's my recommendation go classic red classic red no other color Bar for the no, barn go black yeah fire truck yeah, red. So it's just black a million barn. degrees in there all the time oh black fire barn bam lamb oh, black barney what uh andy Andy Kramer. <laughs> hey, what's up, boys? Since we got hung up on tape measures, measures. What is he talking about? I don't know. Last understand. week. We talked about tape measures. measures. Do Did you we? think that it's yeah. imperative to have the same brand of tape Major. measure? Yes. Since there can be variations between one brand to another. What do you think? Pete, what do you think? Uh, yes, that is one of the reasons reasons that all of my reason. tape measures that's all of the reason that all of my tape measures <laughs> are stanley every one of the reason and i even <laughs> went as far as to just check them just i opened up all of them side by side by side all of them are you gonna make that marvel joke again please don't make that marvel joke the marvel joke i don't know what you're talking about stanley i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> didn't he, he make the marvel joke movie. stop it he did oh. he, ha he has in the past <laughs> so i just i lined them all up on the edge of a workbench and just all the one inch marks lined up and I knew they're good. So all of those Stanley's that that's the ones I'm using. I reach other ones sometimes, but it's usually for rough measurements when I'm just actually doing woodworking. I'm primarily grabbing the 12, uh, 12 foot one. Cause they're super light. They just fit in my pocket. And if I clip them onto my pants, they're not pulling my pants down like a 25 yes. footer or something. Yes. Gosh. That's, that's my thing. Uh, Mike, what about you? You've got that fancy. Remind one, right? me to get you only 25 foot tape measures. If they're pulling your pants down. 32. You know what I'm saying? Hey -oh. Oh. Uh, I only have the fast cap ones really only because I just hit buy four instead of one. When I go by, <laughs> there's no real reason. <laughs> like, do that. Everyone so do check that. This, but so one, check this out. Five times. Yeah. So check. So Sean and I were working on a project uh, last mm -hmm. week. And uh, he's like, man, these are like an eighth inch longer than they should be. And I was like, nah, man, <laughs> I measured those like four times. We went back and I measure it and it's 24 inches long. But on his tape measure, they're 24 and an eighth inch long. <laughs> his tape measure that he's been using for a half a century or whatever. Sean's crazy old. No, I'm just kidding. Sean, Sean's, Sean's tape measure, uh, it's a half an inch or an eighth of an inch longer than my tape measure. <laughs> the tip thing on the end that moves, it's gotten loose over the years. Oof. And yeah. and now it's so I understand he's like, how that works. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Tail is all this time, you know? No, it was uh <laughs> it was his is loose his tip. Long, yeah, loose syndrome. Tip, L, LTS loose tip. <laughs> loose, oh, that's absolutely the show title. <laughs> Eight inch loose tip. Okay, hold on. Um, 
Yep. Yeah. Um, anyway, so you know his tape measure. I don't know. So we don't know if mine is an eighth inch shorter or his is an eighth inch longer. It's probably an eighth inch longer is a safe bet. But uh, yeah, it's um, you know these things happen. Can so, I get? Can I get? Uh, whenever Sean uh, replaces his tape measure, could you send that to me for reasons? Yes. <laughs> Just to and you know fifty <laughs> percent whatever, whatever I could get. <laughs> <laughs> And if you want, I'll send you the file. A while back, I made uh, eight-inch tape measures that were actually six inches. They were like <laughs> laser files. Someone nice. asked me to make it as a joke. Please, please <laughs> do. I could use someone. You married that lady. She is great. Um, Wait, anyway. no, you got to bring my wife into this. This is <laughs> no you know, this his is, wife. Oh, he's like, he's like someone asked me to make, to make those. Oh. <laughs> I miss that. So don't just call her. <laughs> no, anyway, it's not that good of a joke. It's fine. We missed it. Uh, Austin's lab has this to say. I'm not on the right screen. Now we didn't I all am. answer. We didn't all answer his question. Hey guys, this is Austin we didn't? with Lab. I didn't answer. Instagram. Hey, I got a question for you tonight. Guys, I have to apologize uh, vehemently right now for Daniel Dunlap's error to not. He didn't. Daniel didn't speak up, and it's his own fault. No one's fault, but Dan. No. Your voice. Sorry, Dan. I apologize. I actually thought you did answer. Dan, what's your thought on this? Uh, ditto to everything, Mike. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> I knew you were gonna do. This. Oh, you're such a turd. All right, here's Austin's labs <laughs> question. Bag. Hey guys, this is Austin with Zlabit over on Instagram. Hey, I got a question for you tonight related to content, um, specifically kind of around uh, systems um, or processes you guys have around storing your content or organizing. Um, kind of related to maybe something's not yet posted yet or. Um, kind of storing it for some of those throwbacks or you know reposts or maybe even if it's for long long format YouTube stuff. So, what's your kind of guys' process or uh, systems that you have related to content storage? Pete, I I'm really bad with this. I do not do any kind of organization. All of the content that I post on TikTok, Instagram, all that is on my phone, uh, and it sometimes makes it hard to try to repost some older stuff because I just can't find it. I'm actually very interested how Mike and Dan keep track of that stuff because they they always seem to have a throwback Thursday and whatnot. I don't know if it's searching back or if it's uh, another way, but I don't do it. I I don't, and it's really bad, and I really should just have a folder on my phone. Dan, I want to hear from you. I do keep folders in my photos and videos on my iPhone, and aside from that, I also have a quote-unquote best of the things that I really like, the, the things that really spark my fancy so to speak uh i have a folder for that on dropbox so that i can you know refer to that whenever i want for a throwback thursday or whatever like pete said i i imagine mike has a pretty similar system but let's nope. hear it from mike no i keep nothing like that no i i have folder in my photos just like dan i keep all my old footage on uh ssd drives but i'm actually having trouble with those ssd drives and i've moved over to L lacy's uh for mm -hmm. the recommendation of my future editor guy i've moved over to those and i'm having less issues with that it's more of a not a solid state but it was what's that a spinning drive what's that yeah. called pete um spinning hard drive. standard standard drive i don't know SATA. Anyway. Spinning, no, SATA. Regular hard drive hard, regular hard, hard drive, drive. anyway uh i have stuff over there but like the best of stuff when i have like uh stuff i know or stuff i keep on my phone it's gonna be like throwback i have like a fold an album in my thing like dan was saying for it's literally called throwback thursday <laughs> so i just have all my my best of videos in there that i can they're old reliables that i know can get me some views or some likes uh mm -hmm. pete did you already go I, I went i just wanted to add so like for my instagram tiktok all that content i have no organization Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any YouTube stuff or stuff that I shoot for long form for whatever or anything horizontal with that I shoot with a camera or needs to get edited, I like obsessively organize that. I have folders for everything, all the assets, the photos, whatever. And that all lives on my uh, NAS, my network assisted storage. And I think it's fantastic because I can access it over the network anywhere in the house, including my phone. Can I ask you something? Yeah. I, I want to move my... So I, I run my business off of my iCloud as mm -hmm. a server, like we do with the podcast, but I want to move to a, um, like a local on network server that would work for that. Right. That, yeah. that, that system you've sent me multiple times that I've asked you to send me and never bought. I, I want to move I like all my files CNC on files my there. phone and I just click on the, the IP address of my right. My drive. Instead of going to iCloud. Right. And it has all my stuff. 
It's all available. Okay, I, I need to now buy that. I think I'm going to buy that. It's only available week. on my local network. You right. can That's set all I it want. up, but you can also set it up to access from anywhere. You just I don't want that. In. I really want a closed to, yeah. network in here because I want to be able to like, because Matt's going to basically have his own computer pretty soon mm -hmm. where it's going to run the shipping and the laser when the laser gets moved into the garage, when the new laser comes. And I want to keep all of them on the same net, like just pulling all my, instead of having all my files in iCloud, because sometimes it takes a minute for all well, my, laser between my and Apple devices lives on that between my Apple devices, my iCloud stuff goes pretty quick. I mean, you guys see when you guys upload yeah. to the folder house, so it can be like, if when I have to get it on my windows laptop though, it is so slow. Like I have to like turn that thing off and turn it back on for it to get to refresh the iCloud. So I it's, want to get, and I think it'd be safer. Here's the thing. It's um, I can use it. I can lose up to an entire hard drive of data and lose no data because everything's back. Right, I have it set up as a, a, I think it's a RAID zero for that. Um, but the other thing is I actually like the podcast when I have the video, cause I record on my PC, I move it to the folder and I actually edit with that data being on the NAS and I over Wi-Fi edit that in on my, uh, on my Mac and file. <laughs> So basically, wow. I'm able to edit that without moving it onto my computer. It's not yeah. as snappy as it would be if it was there, but it's, it's like there. what eight hundred dollar investment. Um, about a, let's say a thousand, because you probably thousand. want a decent amount of storage, and the machine or the the NAS itself is four or five hundred bucks, I think, and that's just a box needs four drives in it. Yeah. Okay. And I ended well, up putting four eight terabyte drives in mine. All right. I don't need that much space, but yeah, that's good to know. Uh, you can uh, so fast that uh, starts filling up. Uh. Well, that's good information. This next question is from Kimani Von Strayhorn. Hey guys, Kimani here. So question for you. On a previous episode, Pete mentioned that he went axe throwing and while he was there, you know, he did what woodworky type people do. He checked out the tables and he saw some uh, issues with the tables. Uh, I also posted about a week ago about me going out to a place and seeing some tables that had some serious issues. So uh, I have two questions for you. One, uh, can you remember a location, you know, you know, without saying the name, that you've been to that had <coughs> some memorable uh, issues with their decor as it relates to, you know, woodworking and the things that we do? And two, have you ever been to a place that you felt compelled to tell them all the issues or issues that you saw with something in their establishment or like how to fix it? All right, that's all. Bye. Dan. Yeah, actually, uh, when we were visiting Mike, we went to a coffee shop with Mike. I think it was, uh, I forget the name of the coffee shop, but uh, what was the name? What? Pete's? Pete's no. Pete's? Pete's Coffee, yeah. Yeah, yeah we coffee. went to a Pete's Coffee, not Peter Kapar. Oh. But I noticed their tables weren't like the greatest. There were some gaps in some of the seams, but... I would never, ever <laughs> go to management or anything like that and say like, look, your tables are trash. I just, it just really comes off as super. That's a for sure way to not get that client. Super D-bag. Like I would never do that. But yeah, as a woodworker, I notice things like that. Of course, that's what I do. I, I always notice stuff like that. And I, you know, I'm, I, I keep those thoughts to myself usually. And if I don't keep it to myself, I'm sharing them with my wife and she's rolling her eyes. So, yeah, that's my answer for that. Pete, what do you got? For me, it's going to be coffee shops as well. And it's usually for a lot. Uh, there's a couple places uh, around where we used to live. Live Edge Top. And these are actually Starbucks. There was Live Edge Top and it was solid hardwood, but the, the slope, the Live Edge was clearly carved into the wood. And one of the slabs, I'll never forget oh, yeah. it. It was the opposite. So it, it was, was like, if you're looking edge. at the piece of wood, it was laying down. So it was a, the grain was a smiley face, which means the end grain should be pointed from the bottom going up to the right. No, it was shaved off in like the opposite direction of where the live edge would actually be. Am I making sense? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So like basically... It, instead of it being a smile they like that the back end was just carved the other way as if it was right. a live edge but like don't just, you can get a live edge don't you have to shave it down but no i would never go to management and the, the example that kamani was talking about was actually really bad he sent me the video it was a uh, river table live edge like bench or like high tops or whatever 
where they just clearly did a clear coat over the top. They did not seal the bottom. The bottom was completely rough to like, you Ooh. saw where the mold, like where the epoxy like flowed underneath the wood and they just left it. It wasn't cleaned up at all. It was rough. And you cannot seal one side and not the other. That's a dumb, dumb move. But I would never tell management. Let them yeah. um, learn their own mistakes. <laughs> yeah, Mike, the mic go? Yeah. I didn't Mike go. Is oh, yeah. uh, ditto. Yeah, I mean, I would never go. I would never go talk to management about that. Uh, there's a, a bunch of small restaurants that we frequent. And I'm always like, uh, I'm, I'm, it's really tempting to hand them my card, but I'd never do it because it's an insult. You. And you don't want to insult. You don't want to open up the relationship with an insult. So let them yes, come to you. Exactly. Yes. Someplace, <clears throat> so let them, uh, let them come to you. And if they don't, then they don't. And if they do, great. Make it worth their time. I like uh, that. The, you don't open up the relationship with an insult. I like that. No, no. Uh, the, this next question is from Moses Cho, the Mocho, the Chomo, the Chosen Mo. Wow, Jake Miller's topic last week, oh my goodness, it was fire. You guys were talking about mentors and uh, community and just business things. And whew, man, I, I, I had to sit down for that. It was, it was really good. Um, I don't mean it to sound super sarcastic, but I'm sorry if it did. Um, I genuinely learned a lot. Um, and oh, my name is Moses, by the way. Hi, Moses. Um, hey, I had a question for this week. You guys talked about painting, sprayers, and, and all sorts of stuff um, quite a bit already. But I wanted to ask you guys what your rates are. Um, you don't have to tell me. You know, you can tell the podcast. But I, I guess my question is, how do you guys price your painting service? Um, is it like per square footage? Uh, board footage or just um, hours and type of paint and type of sprayer and different layers. I don't know. And I, I know these are the factors that I've, I've been mentioning, but I, I do want to know what are like your biggest factors in um, pricing your your uh, painting service. Yeah. So, yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you. So I recently started well i just i did a job very recently for a local general contractor that was just finished i just did the finished work um <clears throat> you wouldn't charge per board foot you'd charge for the surface area if you're going to break your pricing out that way i think that that's not a good idea personally for me personally i charge it i made an estimate i estimated my hours of time into it and i calculated my cost for finish it was a clear coat i don't do a whole lot of painting so this is specifically to finishing um, and I pretty much nailed my estimated time and I got paid exactly as much as I, I was really happy with what I got paid. I think that you start to hit diminished returns on these things. Um, finish work. I charge my shop rate for the hours put into it and what I, or what I estimated. I think that you start to get into some points where like the, like if I was in a full kitchen cabinet set, I'm not a perfect, I don't just do finish work. There are some shops that just do finish work and they are so cheap. Like you can take and they can spray an entire kitchen uh, in like a few hours. <laughs> and like for me though, it's like a whole setup. Like I'd have to have my whole spray booth would have to be all realigned. Everything would have to be rejiggered around, but I'm not geared for that. So, um, you know, it's only with, within reason. Like I was spraying a bar top. It was super easy. So I was able to do that. That makes sense for the scale at which I do stuff. So I think, it really, what I'm trying to say is I think it really depends on what you're capable of doing. And I charge my shop rate for the amount of hours for that job. I think if I was doing a kitchen, it would make no sense for someone to pay me to do it because I am not equipped to do that kind of work. Dan. I don't necessarily have a good answer for this because I've actually gotten a few inquiries for doing just kitchen refinishes where they just want the, the cabinets repainted. And I always respond with, uh, this is nah, Daniel dog. Dunlap. This is Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, not Daniel Dunlap Paint Works. If you have no wood working involved, I'm not, that's not my thing. I'm sorry. Uh, if your woodworking project involves painting, then that is part of what I charge. But I'm not going to do just a, a painting or a refinishing project. It's not, it's not something I do. So I don't have a very good answer for this question, unfortunately. Sorry, Pete. 
ballpark my well not ballpark, I estimate my hourly time that is going to take me and just charge my hourly rate and then if i need to pick up special finish for it i well either way i'm charging for the amount of that finish that i would use you know if i'm going to be using i have to buy uh rubio or whatever for it i think i'm going to use a third of it that's what i'm charging plus a markup whatever the 10 percent is uh, but yeah just charge your hourly rate i don't think uh just think about how many times you have to spray the setup the breakdown the cleanup whatever it might entail um and you should be charging that because if it takes you three hours to tape off half of your shop to spray a bunch of times like you should be putting some of that time in there as well and not just charging for the surface area i will say though if you're having to if you're having to tape up your whole shop to spray something you're probably not the person who should be doing that kind of work so you if you need to have like a some sort of like facility that can accommodate that and that's what i was getting the point i was getting to is like a few months ago when I didn't have my spray booth, I wouldn't even have taken that on. But now with my setup, I'm able to pretty quickly do like one piece of yeah, that, furniture. That's 100% accurate. I mean, if yeah. I had a spray booth like Mike does, I would yeah. absolutely take that on because I'm a business guy and I like money. And to Pete's point, like if you're if you're having to like set up a kill room for your spray booth, that's like two, <laughs> like an hour and a half, two Dexter hours of work. Style. Yeah. yeah, like that's two hours of work. Customer should, I mean, if they'll pay for it, that's fine. If you're like me, but I don't want to deal with that stuff. There's a reason I paid money to get a spray booth. It's because I don't want to deal with that. It's crap. It sucks. It's crap work resetting up that spray area. So all solid points. Um, the next question is from uh, Thomas <coughs> St. George. And here is Thomas's question. Hi, guys. I'm Thomas, avid listener and first time caller. I have a question for you. Uh, I think you never had. I have a YouTube channel named, named after me, Thomas Saint George, and I'm French. I'm so sure you already know because of my accent. I tried to grow my channel and made the decision to only speak English so I can reach a bigger audience. But um, most of my compatriots don't speak English and keep asking me why I speak English in my videos. I start start asking myself if, uh, if I should switch back to French and add subtitles, even if it's a pain in the beep to make those. What do you think? Should I just switch back to French? By the way, thanks a lot for your podcast. It helps me a lot to go through my days at work and keep me awake uh, when I'm following in my shop at night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thomas. Dan, I think it, I think it was I think it was raining where he's at. Mm. Anyway, um, I follow a gentleman on YouTube. I subscribe to him. And uh, I think it's Parsons Woodworking. Soup, this, this guy is super innovative, but that's not the point. Um, the point is he actually records everything the same. And then he does two voiceovers. He does an English voiceover. And then he does a, uh, I, I think it's Lithuanian. Russian. Not English. Russian or Lithuanian? Do you know who I'm talking about, Mike? Nope. I can't believe that's accurate. I just threw oh. out randomly. <laughs> he does. He does an English voiceover, and then he does like a Polish voiceover. We'll just oh. say his uh, his native. So tongue. he does. He releases the same video twice with two different voiceovers for each video, and I'm sure he that does really well for him. I can't speak for him, but he probably has the same issue that you have. He has two different uh, audiences audiences that speak two different languages so that that might be something you can look at uh obviously when i whenever i watch his videos i watch the english videos but you know just something something i thought was interesting and then that could uh help you out mike how's yeah, actually, your french that's audience <clears throat> that's what i was going to say was pat lap does that he he does the same thing he releases his videos in english and in french yeah uh, i don't know what the success of that is but i would say it sounds to me like you have you speak English very well. Uh, I think as you speak it more, you're going to speak it even more clearly and better. And I think uh, if obviously the larger audience is English audience, um, I would, if it was me, <clears throat> do it in English and subtitle it in French. That's oh, there's a good idea. Two birds, uh, one so, stone. Yeah, I mean, if you if you get it subtitled in French, um, 
I, I think you're going to be golden. I think that's, I know it's extra work, but you're going to be double dipping on the same content. So, and it seems like it'd be easier to type out the captioning than it would be to re-record a voice, uh, uh, voiceover. So it, even if you could, I think there's captioning apps out there that you can pay for to have it translate, uh, turn your, your voiceover into a caption and then translate that caption into French. And I think I wonder that how be, accurate that would be. Probably not great. You want to do it yourself, I think. And getting so. better. Yeah, it's only going to get better too. Pete, that's a good idea. So the one person I'd recommend you reach out to is uh, Radek. Radek is a, a Polish woodworker who actually lives in the U.S. and D.C., but he's done videos in both languages. So he actually has some hands-on experience with that, and he's grown to be quite a big account now. So he's he's going to be a good one to. Uh, uh, reach out to i think it's uh it's radix r-a-d-e-k-s uh workshop uh on instagram youtube all that stuff so touch base with him because i know he's done some in polish and some in english what the guy said is yeah doing it doing two separate languages that's one option you could even do two channels try to you know double dip in that but i would also look at your metrics both on instagram and on youtube for everything you've posted thus far and where a majority of your eyeballs are coming from because there's plenty there's plenty of views to catch from France or you know whatever other country speaks the language and also I mean, I'm not French saying Polynesia yeah but like it depends French Canada. on how good of a woodworker you are there's plenty of times that I, I find myself watching a video by someone in Germany or in Asia or something like that that just are they're doing an amazing job and it really sucks you in uh, the guys were right about the uh, do, using closed captioning, basically subtitling. So for a video, you can upload a video to YouTube in English or in French and choose different closed caption options. So there are free and some paid options to have it kind of like digitally transcribed. Another thing you can do is uh, go on Fiverr, look up closed captioning. Someone can actually pull uh, you know all that audio out of there. Uh, run it through software, double check all of it, and send you back the closed captioning completely done. So that's another way to do it. So look into Fiverr, look into these other options. I think you posting one video and offering two, you know, subtitle options uh, is going to be a good way to do it. Or try doing it as a completely. Some people do this a completely silent, no speaking video. It works for Jimmy DeResta, right? You you know just show very well what you're doing. And you'd be surprised how many people watch that. That might be worth looking into too. And Dan's got his finger up in here. I misspoke. It's not Parsons Woodworking that I thought was the dual, the the dual lingual. Samsonite. It's right on the briefcase. <laughs> it's not Parsons. It's not Parsons. I can't not, figure well, out. You don't who actually it was, have the answer. It's, it's just not, Parsons. not Parsons. Big fan of yeah. that account though. Big, big fan of not Parsons. All right. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's all I got. Scream! But good on you for uh, for trying to you know satisfy multiple languages in your videos. That's that's a lot of work. Yeah, that's a tough yeah, situation that's... for sure. That's another another thing that like uh, you know we don't have to deal with here on the content yeah. side. And uh, you asking us about it is super cool, but we don't have the right answers because yeah. we aren't. Look at where your eyeballs that, are coming so. from. Most of now I'm going to be US, racking my wrong. brain trying to figure out who this guy is that I've been thinking about. Find out next week. On AWP. This, <laughs> join us next next week on AWP for Dan's answer to his own question. Maybe. But yeah, because that's the last question, right? Dan will never for, remember this next week for sure. No, that's it for questions. Big will thanks Dan to find all out? of our listeners. Nope. Probably not. Uh, big thanks to all of our listeners. Big thanks to all our supporters. Uh, go check out Pete's Etsy class. Go check out Dan's Etsy store. Support <laughs> the show. Uh, what? Leave me oh, some five star reviews. I need to bury a yes, one star. If you review want something that's... from any one of us, please five star reviews. It helps us all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huge help. Huge help. Especially we really Dan. appreciate it. Hey, uh, uh, in other news, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mike, but uh, I, I need to bring this up. Sure, sure. Uh, do you realize in 1893, Charles A. Dana, oh. an editor for the New York Sun, published an editorial calling Chicago a windy city? He did so in reference to the cities full of hot air politicians who were advocating and wooing organizers to hold the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in the city instead of New York. That's why, people. That's why it's Dan's called the math guy. 
Big thanks to all of our supporters. You guys are amazing. We really appreciate you so much. Thanks for all the questions this week. Uh, we will be back next week. And then I think the week after that, we will not be back because we will be in Austin. We're going to be Rubio doing a worst off Fest- show. Yeah, we'll be doing it. It'll just be all the all the dead space. And then us it's going to be uh, a whole uh, lot of uh, Chicago uh, Windy uh, City facts. Yeah, it's going to be, be just episode uh, one. Upwards of, right, episode one, but backwards. So big thanks to all of our listeners. <laughs> we should do that. So, just a backwards episode. Bench on my what's. And then we'll do, uh, yeah, it's going to be really cool. So uh, I don't think that's how words work when they do them backwards. But no. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, share the show. Keep us alive in the feed. The podcast IG is about to hit 3,000 followers. That's pretty neat. It's awesome. Thanks for all of that, you guys. Crazy. Uh, we'll, what's that? That's crazy. That was crazy. Oh, I man. thought he was talking of... backwards. Snarf, <laughs> <laughs> snarf, No, uh, check us out next week. We'll be here. Have a great weekend. Bye now. Bye, 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 bye. Love bye. you all. Long time. Bye, bye, bye. Kill it. Oh gosh. <laughs>